Welcome back. We are set here to start the second half. And if you're just joining us, it has been all Sagu, a 17-point lead, 43 to 26 over MacU again. The 21st ranked MacU in the nation. Yeah, having a little trouble uh today with the shot. Uh, just not falling. Uh, like they're used to, and definitely not like their stat line uh, as an average would show you. So, and it's tough. It's tough to make the trip, a day trip like this. You get up early in the morning, take a long drive, and then you get in and, and try to get your, your legs up under you. It's, it, it is tough. There's some mental things you got to overcome, but uh, that's what winners do. So, look for... Mac, you to make some adjustments and come back and make a good game out of this. First possession of the second half, Saggy's going to get free throws. I saw that three-point attempt made by OPSU. I thought the player who made that looked a little familiar. Remember the name, Tyler Pate. Was that Tyler Pate? Tyler Pate playing for OPSU. Was wow. at Sagu a couple of years ago. Fantastic basketball player. Yeah, Has great. more hair <laughs> up there in Oklahoma. Got to stay a little Was warmer. He the bearded wonder? The bearded wonder. The caveman. Wow. Tyler Pate. How about that? Played under uh, Donnie Boswick here uh, all the way from Palm Beach, Florida. First shot for Mackey was not going to fall. I just I, I couldn't get past. I thought it looked familiar. I had to look, who, uh, look up who it was. And indeed, the familiar name of Tyler Pate. Well, you know, could be someone else with that name. Oh, wow, great block. Good block by Mac U down low. Uh, good defense that time by Terrence Mayimba. Here is Perry. He's going to lose control of it, but get fouled by Cameron Hill. Yeah, Cam noticed that uh, uh, it was an easy breakaway, so kept the easy shot from happening and uh, grabbed his arm. <laughs> you see it, Perry gets by, and he came down and swiped that left arm of Perry. But he's going to go to the line here for two. The first is up, and it's good by Javon Perry. Fourth point on the night. And Perry is two for two from the line now as he converts both. Tipped in, trying to get it up ahead to Sims. Sims brought it in. Good idea, just a little too far out there. And an offensive foul on Mitchell as Mitchell gets called for an illegal screen. Let's see this. Does Mitchell get set? Have to be set. Oh, yeah, he just leaned into it slightly, slightly. Ref caught him. Mac U trying to cut this lead. They are down 15. And then an offensive foul on Mac U as they're going to give the ball right back to Sagu. Uh, one uh, good moving pick deserves another, I guess. Well, they're going to call that on Rhodes. That's going to be his third foul of the game. Now, he's got to be careful. They're leading scorer with three fouls. Look for the Lions maybe to attack down low on the offensive end. Here's Tipton. He's got some space. No good. Mitchell goes up. Tipped out of bounds. It's going to stay with oh, the Lions. Oh, player. That is Rhodes. He went down. Looked like he came down on his uh, foot wrong. Not what you want to see if you're Mac U. He is going to get up hobbling a little bit, and he is going to exit the game, favoring that left ankle. Checking in is Chinua Messina for Mackey. Sago keeps possession here, 30 seconds on the shot clock, fresh clock for the Lions. Looking to get it to Tipton. Down low to Mitchell. Left-handed hook, no good from Mitchell. Now up ahead, here come the Evangels. Here's Bogle. Tried to get it inside, but 
almost blocked away by Mitchell. Yeah, well, Mitchell doing some great defensive work in both first and second half of this game. Desmond Metter gets to the rack, and he's going to get fouled on the way up. So two shots coming his, his way. It's going to be a block on Terrence Mayimba. We'll see hearing him get by the defender. And there is Mayimba. Hmm. I, I disagree with that call. Mayimba was solidly planted. Did not move laterally at all. You get another look at it here as Metter hits the first free throw. Uh, not a lot of movement there. I, I'm, on, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you here, John. Uh, looked like he was there in the right position. I think that's a good no call. Metter's second free throw is good, and the Lions extend the lead one more time. Down low, loses possession was Mayimba. Was guarded by Tipton and looked like he tried to jab one way, go the other, and just lost possession in doing so. Metter now with it, guarded by Perry. He's going to reset, try to get something set up here. Here is Sims driving now. He's got a good look at it. Up and in. Was able to adjust midair and get that layup to look easy as Darren e. Sims. 19-point lead now for the Lions. Here is Mayimba down low, guarded by Tipton. Tipton, pretty good defense, but that turnaround hook shot is pretty hard to stop that, if you yeah, can do that, it like that. that. Right, that looked deadly. He could dial that in <laughs> every time, man. Uh, high up off the glass. Not much you can do on the defensive side there. Cameron Hill driving up, no good. Mitchell with the rebound, left-handed put back is good. Remington Mitchell gets himself a rebound and a quick bucket on the second chance. Kicking it out to Bogle, the big man shoots a three, no good. Rebound by Mayimba. Out to Messina. And they're gonna reset here. Perry. Hands it off to Perkins. Perkins looking for some room. Kicking it out to Perry. He's a good shooter. And he converts. Javon Perry hits the three, making it a 16-point game. When you go into the locker room, John, and you're down 17, what's the attitude? What's the coach say well, when you come back out here in the second half? You just kind of got to scratch your head and just say, guys, we got to start all over again. Don't look at the scoreboard. And let's go out and win a half. And then if we can win a half by 18, we win the game. But uh, other than that, you're, you're, you're really looking to get your team back on track, doing the things that you know that they can do and executing, and good things will come out of that. Whether you can make up the score difference, uh, well, you just you kind of let the play determine that. Long two from Mitchell is good. Remington Mitchell showing the range. The big man just inside the three-point line. Remington Mitchell coming out with a lot of confidence today. Good to see. Down low, here's Bogle. Fakes a pass, gets it out to Messina. Now Perry swings it to Bogle from the corner. The big man hits the three. Justin Bogle showing his range, answering back to Remington Mitchell. Long shot with his own. Yep, and uh, coming off of a, a long a long shot miss uh, earlier on. Kashila gets tied up, and that's going to be a jump ball. It's going to go Sagu's way, or I'm sorry, Mac U's way. That, that's that's uh, Desmond Metter. Metter. Yeah, you see Metter. Good defense yep, right great there. Great defense by the Perry. Ball. Yep. And... Uh, Kashila checks into the game now. I think they got away with a little foul there at the second attempt, unless they called it a jump ball um, uh, before all that developed, and it was just a late call. Here is Perry running the offense right now, down low. Finds Mayimba, can't convert the layup. Got around a defender, had a pretty good look at it, just could not convert. Here's Kashila now. And then an offensive foul. And it looks like it's going to go, according to the reaction, against Darian Davis down low. That is who they're going to call it on. Battling and jockeying for position. 
And they're going to call that, again, offensive foul on Darian Davis. Here is Perry, guarded by Kashila. Gets it over to Messina. Messina driving, kicking it out, tipped by Kashila. It's going to remain here with Mac U. Uh, they got 14 on the shot clock. 14 minutes, 14 seconds left in the second half with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Interesting. I like that. <laughs> 14, 14, 14, 14. Now it's ruined. <laughs> here is Bogle. It looks so good while it lasted. <laughs> Down low here, driving on Tipton. Created a little bit of space. That's a good move. And the foul and the bucket count it. Going to go to the line for the and one opportunity is... Terrence Mayimba. Yeah, that was a good veteran move right there. Move in, get your position, move in, create the contact, a little fake. And Darian Davis really, uh, with the absence of Patello, is the only other big man the Lions have outside of Mitchell. And he's got three fouls, no points and three fouls. Yep. He's and got, make no mistake about it, they're not playing for the bigness. The, the, there's, that's not in the game plan, any low post activity uh, for the Lions. It's all going to be, you have to out-hustle us to beat us. A travel violation Three on straight Schwerin. turnovers. And this is how you let a team back in the game. What was a 19-point lead is now a 13-point lead, and... Mac, you can cut this to possibly 10 with a three-pointer here. That would be a big win for uh, the Mac, you bench there. They would be very excited about this. It's got to be step one, right? Cut it to 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set small goals and just achieve. Here is Bogle, under 10 on the shot clock. Over to Upshaw. Back to Bogle. He's going to shoot from the corner. Can't convert Davis with the rebound. Up ahead, here's Swearingen. Swearingen over to Sims. Sims for three. No good. That's going to go out of bounds. Off of Mac U, and it's going to stay with Sagu. Initially, it looked like he was going to say, the official was going to say Mac U ball. We'll have a look at it here. That's very clearly off the Mac U defender. Swearingen to inbound as Cody Farmer has checked into the game for the Lions. Here is Darian Davis. Kashila guarded by Messina. Kicking it to Tipton. Tipton thought about the three. Swearingen will take the three. No good. Long. And the rebound brought in by Mayimba as he's up ahead. They're going to get a foul on Cody Farmer. It looked like Farmer just got in front of Mayimba there as he was barreling down the sideline. Farmer's first foul. Upshaw down low for Horn. Horn, the right-handed hook shot is up and it's good. That cuts the lead to 11. Back you in or Sagu in danger here, rather, of this lead being cut to single digits. They gotta get a bucket here. Davis is gonna pull up for three. No good. Not really the shot that you want Davis taking in this situation, especially midstream of uh uh, a half-court offense. And Horn goes up and under, and that's going to be a timeout for Sagu as Matt Q has cut this to nine. Definitely a good timeout to take right here. Full 60-second timeout. Get the, get the guys uh, sitting down, get in their grill, remind them that, uh, you know, just because you go up 18, 20 points, does not give you the right to win. You got the, the right to win is to have the most points at the end of the game, to play the hardest for the whole game. That's your right to win. 
Right now, you haven't done that, and you could lose all that, all that hard work you did in the first half. So this is uh, what we would call a come-to-Jesus timeout. <laughs> we'll see how the Lions adjust here uh, coming out of this timeout. Mac Yu seems to have made all the right adjustments coming in or coming out of halftime as, again, they were down 19 here in the second half but they've cut it all the way back to 53-44, only down nine. And that single-digit deficit has to feel very, very good if you're a MACU player and a fan. Well, yeah, because you're winning the half. You're doing all the things that you know you could have done uh, in the first half. Now you're beginning to execute and do them right. And beware of any team that gets on some type of confidence roll. Uh, anything can happen. Now they know anything can happen. 12 minutes left in this game. They could win by 12 or 14. A lot of basketball left to play here in the second half. Again, Sagu leading now. I say just by nine. Nine is a good lead if it's early in the game where Sagu found themselves up 11 to two. But when you're up 19 and now the lead is nine, momentum definitely not in the favor of the Lions. Right. Here is Metter over to Hill. Hill driving hard up, right-handed layup is good. So out of the timeout, Sagu pushes it back to 11, and that's a bucket that they desperately needed. It had been a while since they had scored. Got to get that confidence back. Here's Tipton down low. And then the errant pass could not be brought in that time by Keyshawn Perkins. You'll see the cross-court pass here from Horn. Just let it sail. Very reminiscent of a Ben Roethlisberger <laughs> pass, just selling out. Bear didn't know his own strength. Oh, man, John, I'll take the shot. So it's, it's whatever. <laughs> I know you enjoy it. Whatever. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, ball tipped out of bounds by Upshaw. It's going to be Sagu or remain Sagu ball here. Inbounds it to Mitchell who was checked back into the game for Davis. Ill swings around to Metter. Metter using the Mitchell screen. Oh, yep. And that's going to be a foul uh, against Mackey. Good screen set. Made it very tough. Good positioning by the senior, Remington Mitchell. Cam Hill. Guarded by Messina, now gets it over to Sims, who's guarded by Upshaw. A lot of movement here for the Lions, trying to cause some confusion, free up some shots. Hill, now guarded by Horn. Tipped and now five to shoot, they've got to get a shot off. Kicks it out to Mitchell, he's got to take the shot and it's no good. And the Lions can't find a bucket, but driving hard and converting the layup. That time by Keyshawn Perkins. Cuts it back to nine, 55, 46 lead for the Lions. There's Tipton. Good idea trying to find that cutter in Cam Hill, but it gets tipped out of bounds and thrown back to the officials by our lovely courtside reporter, Kristen Urban. Reflexes like a cat. Trying to find Tipton on the bounce pass. Out of bounds off Mac U. That looked ugly right there, John. Yeah, it, really not a good effort here. Not a solid effort to get the ball in. Fortunate for the Lions, that was off Mac U. They've got 15 on the shot clock. Sims driving, hanging up, can't convert the layup. Metter with the rebound finds an easy bucket with that second chance opportunity. Here is Perkins, guarded by Metter. Kicks it back out to Horn. Horn loses it oh, up ahead to Lance Tipton. He's got no one to beat, and he hits the layup. And a timeout now by Coach Gamblin, and he is not happy, whether it's with the officials or his players. But he is arguing right now with an official, not happy about maybe a no call. And the official nodding his head, not in agreement, just that I hear you, Coach. I hear you. Yeah, and... Uh that's uh, that official is uh, one of the top officials in this area 
gets a lot of Division One, Division Two, and NAIA games. And uh, I, I really like him. I've gotten to know him over the years. His name is Mark Anthony. And he is a big proponent of allowing uh, coaches to express themselves and, and feel free to tell them. As long as you don't use foul language and uh, get out of hand. and Be you're respectful. Just, right? You're being respectful, but in a intense, the intensity doesn't scare him at all. And he'll, he'll let you know, I hear you, coach. I'll keep my eye out. I'm not perfect. I'll do what I can uh, to be better. Yeah. And, and uh, you, you just got to love and respect the referees that have that kind of attitude. There he is, Tyler Pate taking some free throws. <laughs> it for is. OPSU. You, you recognize a jump shot. You recognize the form. I do, and also from the Geico commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and Tyler Pate finds his team down almost 20 in the panhandle, 75 now, 58 in other Sumer Athletic Conference action. Well, he was uh, great friends, family friends with uh, um, Hondo. The Gentries. Right. Coming back to action here, Sagu uh, finds themselves up 13, 59 to 46 after that breakaway layup by Lance Tipton on the turnover uh, coming from Mackey. Just about halfway gone here in the second half. And Matthew's done a good job again of cutting this big Sagu lead to, at some points, nine. And then a fight for the ball. Did they get the timeout off? They did. A good job there by Andre Horn to come down with the ball and get the timeout uh, for his team to avoid the turnover. Yeah, that was just being really scrappy right here. And heads up, heads up play. I don't know that uh, your coach really wants you to burn a timeout uh, at this point in the game, but uh, you know, at least they'll get a little extra oxygen here halfway through the half. And don't want to burn a timeout, especially in a game that uh, that seems like it's got the feel about it that it's going to come down to the wire and be well, close. Definitely, and on the road, you know, you you want all your timeouts. Uh, or as many as you can have uh, five minutes and under in the game so that in case you need them you, for some strategy, uh, you, you can have them. They've, they've used two timeouts here in the span of less than a minute of game time down to their final two timeouts are the Evangels. We'll see if that comes back to haunt them at all. Uh, but they, for the meantime, get to keep possession. Three-pointer from Messina is no good. Cameron Hill with the rebound. Up ahead, finds Darren Sims. Back to Hill. Driving hard on the big man. Left-handed layup, no good. Mitchell's there for it. He puts it back up and in. Remington Mitchell having a good game. That's his eighth point, but he has been a factor down low. Sagu continues to push this lead out a little further. It's now back to 15. Got to keep the foot on the gas. Down low, and an offensive foul. This one's going to be against Daniel William. And you get a good look at it. As he kind of just threw that elbow at Mitchell, and it created enough space for him to get a clean shot off. I feel like that's an easy call. Yeah, that was definitely an easy call. It was either that or a travel. He got the worst end of the deal because he <laughs> gets, uh, gets an infraction of the foul. They're limited. Tipton swings it over to Hill, over to Metter. Metter looked to go baseline, but was cut off there by Horn. Tipton's going to go baseline, kicking out to Metter. Over to Hill. Thought about the three. He's going to take it anyway. Cameron Hill, three-point attempt is short. And here comes Mac U. They're out and running. Horn driving on Hill. There's going to be a foul. It's going to be on the floor. And it looks like it's going to go against Cameron Hill, and it is his second foul of the game. Here you see the second foul where he got beat uh, defensively and just kind of had to foul to avoid an easy bucket. Not something you want to see out of your freshman point guard who, who at this point in the season is probably your best player. 
Three-point attempt from wow. Messina is good. That's their first three in what feels like a long time. The last three coming from Bogle, the big man. 61-49, the lead is 12. Here is Metter, they've got just about 10 on the shot clock. Sims leaving it for Hill. Hill going to the basket, layup high off the glass and in Cameron Hill. Athletic finish. Stepped into the three is Horn and he hits back to back threes now for Mackey. Yeah, don't want to allow Mackey, if you're Sagu, to get uh, the momentum back and the momentum shift, but giving one guy confidence, especially with their leading scorer out. One of these guys is looking to step up and be the man. And uh, oh, what a pass from Cam Hill gets it to Mitchell, who didn't seem like he was ready for it, but he's going to finish at the rim makes, with that hook shot. Makes up for it and uh, converts. What a pass, though, by Cameron Hill behind the back, wraps it around and finds Mitchell. Yeah, pretty Great place. Pass. Mitchell gets his 10th point of the night. Here you'll see it again. Oh, this is early. That's the rim grazer from earlier in the game. I remember that. That was Sagu's third or fourth possession. Now to the line. Here is Keyshawn Perkins after the foul on Sagu. First free throw from Perkins is up, and it's good. Sagu's going to bring in a couple of new players, Swearingen, Davis, and Kashila. So Sagu now, Mitchell and Davis both on the court at the same time. Maybe going to play a little bit bigger than they have all game here with the addition of Davis. Second free throw from Perkins on the way. And it is good. Keyshawn Perkins, 2-2 two two from the line that trip. And here come the Lions, leading by 11. Sheila leaves it for Davis to Mitchell. Mitchell bobbles it, can't get it, and it's going to be a turnover, an unfortunate turnover. That looks like it should have just been caught by Mitchell and just went right through the hands. So now Mac Hughes got a chance to cut this lead back to single digits here. Here's Messina. Over to Bogle. Bogle gets his man in the air. And Davis, here's Mitchell. Defense down low. Off the glass. Pretty jump shot. Yeah, nice, smooth release. Off the glass. That was Terrence Mayimba with the good looking jump shot. Nine point lead now for the Lions, looking to extend that. Here's Kashila. Tried to get it over to Sims and it was a bad pass and goes out of bounds. And Sagu with a couple of turnovers here in a row are allowing Mac U right back into this game. This is an important possession for uh, the, the Evangels in that uh, they get a good conversion here. Now the pressure is applied to a young team and I guarantee uh, Coach Gamblin knows that, that the, the youth, while uh, Coach Dill turns that into a strength, coming down the stretch, it's hard to, to keep that youthful lack of experience um, out of trouble with, with uh, not, com not making turnovers and just silly little mistakes like the one that you just saw. We're starting to hit very close to that five minute mark and five minutes is very significant in the game of basketball because it's usually where the, the walls begin to, to show up. And um, it's a mental thing. Can these young guys for the Lions overcome their, uh, their lack of experience uh, in comparison to the team that they're playing and uh, make the right play, be smart? There you see the score in some other student athletic action. USAO who came uh, to Sagu earlier this week and beat the Lions by three. A beating Texas Wesleyan. So a good matchup there. Wow. Beating Texas Wesleyan is a big deal. 
Good move by Swearingen to get the left-handed layup up and in. And tough finish there by Adrian Horn. Gets it up and in, keeping this at a seven-point lead now for the Lions. And it is crunch time for Mac U. They got to get some stops here. Well, the ball's in the right hand. Swearingen gets fouled on the way up. Swearingen knows what to do in times of pressure. When everyone gets tight, he's a little more loose than everyone else, and he can create uh, very good things. As you see right here, he creates the contact. Didn't have to make the shot. Good free throw shooter. Uh, <laughs> well? Well, misses the first of these two, Josh Swearingen does. Not something we're used to seeing out of the hands of Swearingen. And so Matthew calls this possession a win. And now, if you're coach gambling, you're, you're playing possessions at this point. Swearingen's second free throw is good, pushing the lead back out to eight, 68 to 60, with about five and a half left to play here in the second half. Swearingen with the pestering defense there up top. He's only got one foul, so he's got a little room to work with. Horn and for three in the corner, no good. Kashila comes down with the rebound and gives it up to Cameron Hill. That's a big miss for yeah, the Lions. That, that was a big miss because it was a good setup, and uh, he had a good, solid, open look. Fell out of his shot a little bit. Good defense. That's going to be a turnover for the Lions. They're going to get Swearjin for the hold off. He was trying to hold off. It was good defense. He, he got the ball right here. Now it's a 50-50. But because Swearingen reached back, although it might not have been very significant, he reached back, and that's what the referee saw. So we call him for a hold. So going to the line now is Andre Horn, and he's got a one and one to work with. So we got to hit this first one, and it is good. So he's going to get a second chance here, as Desmond Metter is going to check into the game for Darian Davis. A chance to get as close as they've been in a very long time. Definitely as close as they've been in this second half. Second free throw from Horn is good. Makes it a six-point game. And, John, we have a two-possession game. In a second half where Sagu was up 19. Mac U showing the tenacity to come back. Metter taking a rare three, and he hit Desmond Metter. That's not a shot we see him take often, no. but he converted. Yeah, he did, and that's, uh, that's his experience there. He's one of the most experienced guys on the team. He and uh, Josh Swearingen. Tipton's going to get nabbed for a foul in just a second of the game. That was a big three-pointer for Sagu. It puts them, see, it's the difference in being or being only up nine when you had a lead of 19, but now you're up nine when you only had a lead of six. That's right. That difference just feels so, just, just the, the difference feels different, I want to say. And there's a free throw missed. You can't miss those guys coming down the stretch. Here, Wasted possession. Matter leaves it for Tipton, and in and out, Tipton. Good idea, got to step into the three and just missed it. Here's Perry. Perry can shoot, and he does convert, making this, again, a six-point lead. Lots of time. This is where you just settle down, look for something good. They don't have a low post option. McHugh needs to recognize. Swearingen, great move, but it gets blocked at the rim. Now up ahead. Here's Perkins up and in. Keyshawn Perkins cuts this to a four-point game. And the Mackey bench and the fans that are here have come alive here late in the second half. Three and a half to play. Here is Metter. Just got to relax. Play your game. Tipton Good. up and Great in. Great cut by Tipton over the top. Easy layup. That's what Sagu needs. Easy bucket opportunities. Down low. And he lost possession. That's going to be Matthew Ball. Sagu saying no one touched it, but Mayimba, we'll see here. 
should get a good look. Yeah. Better did reach Matter. around and get a, p a piece of it. Got to really, you know, grip the ball when you go up. When you pick up your dribble, make sure you grab it. Don't let those easy touches. Ogle, mid-range jumper, no good. Metter can't come down with the rebound. And oh, wide easy. open down low, elects to go to the three. Here's Perry, and he hits. Wow. That is clutch. Perry with such a huge shot. Javon Perry takes the pass. What looked like he had an open layup, did Perkins. And they wanted the three, and Perry converted. Here's Hill. He's going to get fouled. He is going to go to the line. This should put Sagu into one and one territory here for uh, the Lions. Is it is it only nine? So I thought it might put them in the double bonus. Nope. It is. They're in the double bonus. Mackey only has seven fouls. So that's the one and one. Cam Hill hits the front end of this one and one, and it would be a big bucket to push this to five points. Oh boy, what what a game when you're talking about a five point lead being significant lead when Sagu led by nineteen. Actually it's a four point lead. Well if he hits his free throw. Yeah. If he hits his free throw. I don't want to jinx anything. If he no, hits yeah, his free yeah, throw. Yeah. Here is Cameron Hill, the freshman. Can he convert the one and one? He mm. cannot. He misses it and it remains a four point lead. Here for the Lions. And Mackey now under three minutes to play. Here is Perkins. He's driving. Blocked by Remington Mitchell. Huge stop. Here is Swearingen. He's going to slow it down and wait for his teammates to join with him. And that pass gets broken up but out of bounds off of Mackey. Wow. wow. Remington Mitchell stepping up big. Time. There you see the scrum for it there between Perkins and Swearingen. And Coach Dill probably has or had his most experienced team on the floor. Mitchell, Swearingen, and, and Metter. And a timeout now by Mac U. They've only got one left now. And so now you're in that position, and we go back to that timeout. Sometimes those timeouts you think are you're creating, they didn't come away with a point off of that timeout uh, way back at uh, the uh, nine minute mark. Sometimes you gotta understand this is a big game of battles, and, and pick your battles that you really need to win. So you're looking at uh, just a four point deficit Two minutes and 20 seconds left. I mean, that's forever just for a four-point deficit. So uh, you need those timeouts. So you could create uh, strategy, give your guys a rest, let them think, let them be the best that they can be coming down the stretch. There you see Coach Gamblin and Coach Deal uh, for their respective squads coaching up their teams here. And we have got a tight game. Separated by four points again, Sagu leading 74 to 40. Yeah, well, you know, we, we said it at the very beginning that this is going to be a good game in that at the end uh, I, we felt like it would be very tight. At least that's what the numbers look like on the paper. And it's proven out to be it's been an odd way to get there. Tell of two halves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mac U to inbound. Two under 220 left to play here in the game. Can Sagu get another stop here? Driving his horn. Remington Mitchell, a block again. Has just shown out on the defensive end today. And that was a great defensive uh, positioning for the team that Coach Deal uh, put in, knowing. Remington Mitchell has been the great rim protector all night, forcing them in down low and let Remington just do what he's been doing. Hill thought about the three-pointer. Lance Tipton's going to take it. It's short. And Swearingen comes up with it somehow, lands in his lap. And they're going to reset here, but it gets poked away by Perry. 
And they're gonna call a, a backcourt wow. violation. I thought that Perry had gotten a piece of this. And well, he mm, not sure. And okay, so here's what happens. Uh, he could touch it all day long, as long as the possession didn't change. And Swergen goes over the line with his foot. It's not the same rule as when you get to the line. It's once you're past it, now no part of your body can cross. It's a big turnover for Mac U as it keeps the game at four points. One under 120 left to play. Driving is another Mitchell. block by Mitchell. Three blocks in a row for Remington Mitchell has just come up huge. And Coach Gamblin has to wonder, what do I have to do to get my players past Mitchell? Well, let me let me tell you what you have to do is you don't go in <laughs> where the great <laughs> rim protector is. Remington Mitchell. This is the game, by far, the game of his career here at Sagu. He's been here for four years, and this is lights out defense by Remington Mitchell and you got to be excited if your coach deal you, you this they walk away with this win this is huge huge position power in the Sooner Athletic Conference jump ball was called so it is going to be Sagu's possession as the arrow is in favor of the Lions tipped into inbound he gets it to Sims and they get it up court to Cam Hill. Pass almost gets away from Swearingen. And he gets the pass up to Mitchell. And then a turnover wow. thrown off of Swearingen. It's going to be Matthew Ball. And that was just a mess. Yeah, it was. Great credit to the uh, Mac. Oh, he was out of bounds. Did you see well, that? I would love to get another look at that. He was out of bounds, and the ref missed it. Look at the ref's eyes. They're up at the ball. But he comes down with the ball, and he's out of yep, bounds. Absolutely. He can't come back in. Nope, he didn't establish his presence back in bounds. That is a blown call. We'll see if that hurts Ooh. the Lions. And down goes a Mackey player, and that's not what you want to see. The Lions have numbers here under a minute to play, and Mackey has to foul as their player goes down hard, and that is Terrence Mayimba. Their second leading scorer. You got to remember, Josh Rhodes went down earlier this game, who is their leading scorer. This would be a huge blow for Mackey if he can't continue. He, he can't put any weight at all on that left leg, and that is not not a good sign. Callen Woodson steps into the game, uh, coming out of this timeout. Sagu takes a timeout here with under a minute to play, 47 seconds to be exact. Uh, but Sagu's going to have some free throws here coming out of this timeout as they had to foul because of the injured player on the court. So Sagu's got a chance to potentially push this to a six-point game. When a player like that goes down who, who is as important to this team as Mayimba is, that's got to leave a mental block now for Mac U to get over that hump. Well, uh, you would think that from the outside, but on the inside, you've got players that are ready to step up, and they're deep enough to be able to pull. Now, you're right. These are the top two players uh, for Mac U that have gone down to some injury, and... Uh, and you, you're asking a lot from your bench, but the, that's what these guys on the bench are waiting for. They're waiting for a time that they can seize a moment. So I say there's a better chance that they rise up to the moment than actually let the moment crush them. So it's going to be interesting to see. Wood, uh, Kalon Woodson. Plenty of time on the clock. If you know how to use your clock and, and use it right, you could, you could milk this for a lot of different uh, possessions and defensive stops and opportunities. You got a foul though. Got uh, a I was wrong. I thought they were going to have free throws, but they didn't get a foul. Uh, they just stopped play. And Sagu doing a good job of playing a little bit of keep away here. Took a lot of time off the clock. They took 12 seconds off the clock there. Yep. And Mackey finally had to foul. Good job by the Lions to keep it away. 
Yeah, and this is uh, this is definitely different strategy. Yeah, I guess you call me old school. The, <laughs> the, in the old school, man, we kept as much time on the clock as possible, giving ourselves plenty of opportunity. And uh, I'm with you. Upset, Fat, upset alert. Absolutely, USAO holding on to a one-point lead over Texas Wesleyan. But, no, I'm with you. Foul quickly. You want the yeah. 47 seconds that ball gets touched. I'm fouling by 46, 45. You want to do that. Yeah, and well, the key to that is because you don't want to get caught in like you just saw and we saw in the women's game is a game of keep away because yep. you could pass the ball faster than you can run. You have to foul before the entry pass. Tip. And and it's very, very important uh, to communicate with the referees that this is what you're going to do. Tipped and hits both free throws, and then the driving Keyshawn Perkins is going to get fouled. So he's got two shots here. Uh, with under 30 seconds left to play, they're going to call that foul, uh, I believe, on Darren Sin. Oh, no, they're going to call it on Mitchell. He hit the body, but the, the foul officially gets put under Darren Sims' name. Uh, but it looked more... Like that was on Mitchell's end. But here's Perkins for two shots regardless. First one is up and good from Keyshawn Perkins putting this. Like to see that from uh, a player in tense times. He took his time. He evaluated the what he had to do, breathe, and take the best effort that you can. It worked out that in that shot. He misses the second free throw. Tipton comes down with it and then loses possession, but it goes out of bounds. Sagu ball. That's the right call. We'll, we'll get a we better can... look at it here. Tipton had it and then just from behind. Good defense recognition. Got the ball loose. Mackew hits it and now Tipton hits Tipton it. Tipton hits it, so it is. Accu ball, but a timeout here by the Evangels. It's a good place. This is a good place for a timeout. At this point, though, there's 26 seconds. You got to make sure you're covering all your bases on defense and offense. So a lot to talk about in this one timeout, and you're 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 creating all all the strategies and and alerting your players to all the angles and coverage points. This is what you do in this scenario. Got to really name them all out, and there's a lot. So you got to cover a lot of material in this timeout for Mac U. Coach Deal holding on to a five point lead coming out of this timeout. Tiger's done very well this year with holding off challengers. Out of this full timeout, now Mac U uh, again has none left. And they do have possession after the referee. Reversed the call and made the right decision. Again, as we saw on the replay, Mac U down five. There's a foul. The hand is up. And that's that's going to be an offensive foul. I believe I believe that's the call. No, they're going to call it on swear engine. Yeah, it looked like he fought through. Look, all right, it's all jumbled up, and now he pushes through, extends the arm, and uh, just can't do that. It's going to be two shots for Andre Horn. Makes the first. Now there's under 20 seconds left. Very and confident free throw absolutely. shooter. Absolutely. <laughs> this team is a, a very good free throw shooting team. Has hit him here in clutch moments. Uh, he can make this a three-point game with this free throw. It's up, and it is in and out. Tipton comes down with the rebound. And they're going to foul Tipton. they got to foul him eventually, but no. Gets the pass off, and here's Cameron Hill, who gets fouled. He's going to go to the line. They were killing Lance Tipton down there. Yeah, a lot of swatting at the ball. As long as there's no hold, 
They're going to let that play out. And, and if you're – Cameron Hill's a good free throw shooter, but Lance Tipton is a great free throw yep. shooter. And, and I think they got the, the right guy out of those two at least. Yes. Uh, in, at least in their mind and uh, what their scouting report probably told them. Now, obviously, you would want to have uh, Remington Mitchell on the line. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're all good free throw shooters out there for the Lions right now. Um, there you see, still on upset alert, 84-81. The Drovers leading the Rams. Going to keep a close eye on that one. So you got to get a three here um, if uh, Sagu doesn't score. Well, if they do score it, yeah, I mean, just no matter what, you got to yeah. get the ball down quick. Quick three-point shot. Hope that it goes in. And, and now Sagu has to play. Uh, to make these, you got it. You, you've got to make these. This basically ices the game. Cameron Hill, who has been a good free throw shooter for the majority of this season, front end of the one on one, and he rattles it around and converts the first half of it at least, so that pushes it back out to five points. Here is Hill. Second shot of a one and one is up and it's good. Two clutch free throws from Cameron Hill. Makes it a six point game with 10 seconds to play. Here's Bogle for three. It's no good in and out. The tip goes up and in by Keyshawn Perkins. What so you now do, you got a foul right now. Got a foul right now. And they do foul Cameron Hill. And the clock continued to run. It looked like the clock continued around. The yeah, I think, players are pointing at it. Yeah, I think they uh, they adjusted it. Yeah, they look. I think the <laughs> these shot clocks tonight have been have been crazy. The time yeah. ran on the shot clock, but not on the actual scoreboard. And I think that's what the players were looking at. Yeah, the, I <laughs> I think the shot clocks are wireless, and uh, they've been having some um, frequency problems with uh, those signals. But Cameron Hill to the line here could ice this game. 5.2 seconds left to be exact here in the gym. Cameron Hill's first free throw is good. Ladies and gentlemen, you just think about what's going on. This is a freshman being ice in his veins, cool as a cucumber, Mr. Clutch, Cameron Hill icing this game. With one second left, they're going to get another three off, and it doesn't fall. And the Sagu Lions are going to walk away with a hard-fought six-point victory against the Mac U Evangels. What a game, John. What a game. Yeah, that's a, that's a fun game uh, coming down the stretch. A lot of strategy by Tuco. You saw two fantastic young coaches in the Sooner Athletic Conference and uh, uh, just really fun to watch these guys blossom and um, coach their teams to just what's a fantastic product on the floor. That's what you want to have. And uh, that was very enjoyable. Absolutely. There you see the up to the minute uh, Sooner Athletic Conference standings. Well, how much of an upset can you call USA over Texas Wesleyan? I forget that they're tied at the top of the Sooner. It's not a huge upset, but well, in, in, in my historically, mind, it well, seems like a big upset. Definitely historically, but uh, I've seen Texas Wesleyan play, and they've got probably the best player in the nation on their team, maybe the <laughs> top two, and uh, they shouldn't be getting beat by anybody, <laughs> if you ask me. Well, there but. you see the Sagu Lions improved to eight and five and eighteen and seven overall, and MacU falls to six and six in conference and twelve and eight overall after this tightly contested game, John. Yeah, the student athletic conference is ridiculous. Well, that, yeah, it is, and uh, it's always like this. And uh, they, they got a huge positioning power by this win today so it was a must it was a must 
Our courtside reporter, Kristen Urban, is with Sagu Sports Network player of the game, Remington Mitchell. His defense was a huge factor tonight. Kristen, what's Remington have to say about this big conference victory? Thanks, Adam. Remington, it was a great night for you defensively. What do you attribute to this success? Uh, I just come out here, try to come out here and uh, be the best way I can be for my teammates. Uh, we all try to come out here and work out 100%. Uh, defense is really the key to win games every game. So uh, I just try to do my best blocking shots, and I think that's probably the best thing I am out here for. How do you feel going into your next game against Wayland Baptist? Uh, I feel real confident about our team. We all always coming out hungry, ready, to, uh, ready for more. So uh, this is a team that we lost the first time. We shouldn't have lost, so we got to come out strong and ready to uh, compete. Thanks, Remington, and congratulations. Thanks. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Remington. What a game by Remington Mitchell. Uh, those three huge blocks in a row on defense really secured this victory for the Lions. Again, your Sagu Lions take the men's basketball ta team takes the win 80 to 74 after the Lady Lions drop to the Lady Evangels. Another, another great game here in the Sooner Athletic Conference. There you see our next broadcast is this upcoming Thursday, February, 4, February 1st, rather, 6 p.m., 8 p.m. start time, central time, against Wayland Baptist coming to town. That's another big, I feel like every game is a big game. So we're definitely excited to see that one uh, after this fantastic performance tonight between both the men's and women's team. For our fantastic student crew, uh, for our great courtside reporter, Chris Urban, for my partner, John Cookman, I'm Adam Ferguson. You have watched the Sagu Sports Network.